Hey, and welcome to The Short Stuff. This is Josh. There's Chuck. Jerry's here. Dave's here. His heart is, at least. We carved it out of him like it was the Temple of Doom. (laughs) And this is Short Stuff, about one of my deepest fears. (laughs) Your house smelling? Yeah, I'm worried. It's a general concern of mine that my house smells, and I don't know it, but everyone who comes over knows it. Well, can I start this off with a very quick little story? Sure. When I lived in L.A. many years ago, my friends, uh, Brett and Stacy, lived in a house in Pasadena that had a, a very distinct smell. It was a good smell. It wasn't like a bad smell, but, you know, all houses have an odor. Sure. Uh, many years later, I went to the house of our mutual friend, Andy Ciara, mm-hmm. a writer of the hit movie Palm Springs, mm-hmm. uh, and his wonderful wife, Amanda, and their two kids. And their house, they lived in near Pasadena, smelled the same way. And then last year, I went to L.A., and I went and dropped by our mutual friend Ben Harrison's house. Okay. Uh, ben and his lovely wife, Rachel, uh, Ben of the Greatest Generation podcast. Right. And their house smelled the same way, and they live in Highland Park, not too far from Pasadena. I don't know if it's a Pasadena thing or that part of the valley, but all of these houses smelled exactly the same. And it was so evocative. When I walked in, I was like, Ben, your house smells like my other two friends' houses, it may be an L.A. thing. It may be part of the products out there. I have no idea what it was, but it was identical and very, very strange to to witness with my nose. Can you, can you describe the smell? No, not at all. It's a house smell. How do you? Okay. It's not like it smelled like cigarettes or or dog poop or anything. Right. It's it just it's a it's a house smell. It smells like radon. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a good smell. Like their houses all smelled fine, but it was the same fine smell. So Chuck. Um, I'm a little disappointed in that story because of two things. One, I thought it was going to be (laughs) apropos of my fear. Uh And two, I thought that it ultimately was going to assuage my fear. It didn't do either of those things. No. Everyone's house has a smell. You just don't know it if you live there. This is just getting worse and worse for me. (laughs) All right, let's talk about house smells. Because if someone's house smells, it is really possible and more than that, entirely likely that that person really genuinely has no idea that it smells, even in some of the worst cases where, like, it stinks and reeks of, like, set-in pet odor, uh-huh. like years and years of pet odor that has just not been cleaned up and is in the ductwork and is on the baseboards and is everywhere. That person genuinely probably doesn't know that their house smells like that. And the reason why is because we become sensory adapted Two things like smells. We talked a lot about this. Remember latent inhibition when we first mm-hmm. ran into that one? Sure. I think that was in our schizophrenia episode, maybe? Yeah. That, that's basically that. It's There is a point where you, your senses no longer need to tell your brain what they're encountering. Your brain's like, okay, got it. I've already determined. The house smells like cat pee. Doesn't matter. Let's be on the lookout for threats or enticing things. And we become desensitized, and apparently we become desensitized to smells particularly quick. Yeah, I think out of all the senses, smell is the first one that you get used to. Uh, There are experts that say just a few, and I think this came from our uh, our old colleagues at How Stuff Works. Right. Uh, And they, uh, to their credit, like would do interviews and stuff with experts. And one of the experts said it just takes a few breaths sometimes even to get used to a smell. Um. And, you know, it, it takes, they say, uh, about a, if you're gone for about a week, you can uh, become desensitized. And then when you come back to your house, you could re-smell that smell. And this horrifies me because when we used to go on long trips, uh-huh. I would come back and be and think it was our house sitter would have this sort of funky, musky <laughs> smell. And now I think it's just our house smell. Which it right. has to be, man. We've always had at least four pets always two dogs and at least two cats, sometimes three dogs, and our house has to smell. It's It just, it has to. There's no way around it. Okay. I am going to demonstrate what a friend does. <laughs> okay. Chuck, uh-huh. I've been to your house uh-huh. multiple times. <laughs> sure. <laughs> with your dogs there, and uh-huh. I can tell you that your house does not smell in any kind of offensive way or any way <laughs> that people are talking about how your house smells behind your back. Your house smells fine. Well, I will say this to you, my friend. I know you, and I know Yumi, and I know that you guys are very clean, like, uh, I wouldn't say clean freaks, but, or obsessive, but you really are into, like, having things clean and tidy. 
I guarantee you your house does not smell in some uh, some funky, terrible way. I-, I hope so. I appreciate that. It feels like I had to pull your teeth out to get it, but I appreciate it. <laughs> but I-, I guarantee you it does have a smell. <laughs> yeah, I just hope it's it's a good smell because it's true. Some people's houses just smell good. They smell like a Mew Mew or something. Yeah, I mean, we we are pretty good about cleaning, but there's just only so much you can do. Like the front couch in our sunroom is the dog couch, and that thing stinks. There's yeah, nothing I'm telling we can do you, about it. your house is not, it's not, your house doesn't smell. You don't have a smelly house, okay? <laughs> All right. I appreciate so, it. Uh, so, but yes, I, I know that fear because I've come home and, and after like a week and been like, this, does, is this where our house smells like? Does it smell weird? I don't, <laughs> it I don't like this. What can we do about this, you know? Well, just stay in, stay around for about an hour and then it's like, oh, it doesn't smell. Thank goodness because right, you've become resensitized. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the, uh, then step two is don't make any friends. Don't have anyone over. <laughs> then you don't have to worry about it. Case closed. <laughs> So the the reason you become so desensitized to your house smell is because you're not only being like exposed, like, um, you know, pretty quickly after just a few breaths, you're constantly being exposed to your house smell. So it's impossible for you to smell your own house. Yeah. But if you are like, okay, um, there's some things that I want to do. I want to make sure that my house doesn't smell. There's steps you can take. And I think we should take a break and then we'll come back and talk about them after this. Great. If you want to know, then you're in luck. Just listen up to Josh and Chuck. Stuff you should know. So if you're like, guys, I'm not convinced. I'm worried that my house still smells. Mm -hmm. We're here. Actually, our friends at House Stuff Works are here to suggest some things you can do. And the first thing is, is just look for low-hanging fruit. Like, do you have towels bunched up in the corner that have mildew growing on them? If the answer is yes... You might want to get rid of those because they might be making your house smell. Yeah, keep your ducts clean. Keep uh, your litter box emptied. Uh, You know, if you have mold and mildew, that's going to make your house smell. So Mm -hmm. get your sort of filtration system checked, Uh, that kind of thing. Like that is the lowest of the low-hanging fruit is clean your litter box more regularly. Definitely. Um, And then some people step it up and say, okay, I've done all those things. Not only do I want to get rid of bad smells, I want to make my house smell good. Well, there's an entire industry that's dedicated to that. Um, I would recommend something natural, like a nice bouquet of dried lavender or a bouquet of dried eucalyptus. Those are two of the greatest smells in nature. Those will certainly help. You can even go a step further and put them in your return air duct which is pretty great because then it gets that scent throughout your house. Yeah, that's a nice, but, I don't want to say hack. Don't say hack. I didn't. <laughs> it's a good hack. Certainly though. don't say life hack. <laughs> but, that, but that also demonstrates smells get around your house through your HVAC system, just FYI. Good or mm-hmm. bad, your house's HVAC system doesn't care. It's going to send them around your house. Yeah, I like a citrus smell. So yeah. sometimes I'll do a little lemon squeeze uh, on a on a filter or something, and you know that's it's a pretty short lived experience. It's not like that filter just smells like lemon for months and months or anything like that. But it's a nice like citrusy blast throughout the house. Do you when you squeeze the lemon? Do you say simple fimple? <laughs> I do actually. Okay, good. Simple fimple, lemon squeezy. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So you can also use a one of the most one of the best selling products of the like beginning of the twentieth century. Mm -hmm. Uh, something called Febreze. And we don't normally do buzz marketing, and we don't mean to do it here, but Febreze actually has one of the most interesting stories of all times. It's actually taught in marketing classes in business school because when Febreze first came out, it was a total flop. Yeah, I think, and I remember this, when Febreze first came out, it was marketed as, hey, if you've been to a smoky bar or something, Mm -hmm. Um, or if you're, you have a couch like Chuck Bryant does, uh, you can get rid of these, these foul odors, uh, and make your, your, uh, corduroy coat that was in that bar, not smell <laughs> like cigarettes anymore. Right. And those were sort of the basis of the early commercials and they, they didn't work out very well at all. So they, they shifted very successfully to a campaign that was more like, Hey, after you've cleaned your house and you're done, just let this product be sort of the final cherry on top. Right. 
Um, and the reason why it didn't work at first is because they realized that people become desensitized to their houses' smell. Yeah. And so the people who needed Febreze to get the smelly out of their house were the ones who weren't aware that they actually needed it, which means you're not going to sell a lot of Febreze. So they changed it, like you said, to saying, no, this is the this is the punctuation mark on your cleaning. It's the last part you do. It lets you know the job's done. It's a little kiss of cleanliness. And Febreze just took off like a rocket from there. That's right. And they have, uh, it's a very big piece of the market uh, because they realized they could expand to all kinds of uh, quote unquote air freshening products with that yeah, label. And I was looking into it. I found a little Thoughtco um, article on how Febreze works, and basically, it's a it's a, a carbohydrate called beta cyclodextrin, and it's like a donut shape, and it actually it attracts odor molecules into the donut and basically wraps around them, which means those odor molecules can't come in contact, or when they do come in contact with our noses, they can't bind to our, our odor receptors. So they're still there, but they literally can't, we can't smell them. It's impossible for us to smell them. That's right. Uh, and if you uh, look up stuff like our products like this toxic online, you're going to find a lot of opinions. Um, one thing we should say is that the U.S. law uh, allows companies to um, basically hide things under the label fragrance. Uh, there's like 4,000 different chemicals that can be uh, included as, in, in a product as fragrance. Right. Uh, some are safe. Some are, are great. Uh, some are very much carcinogenic. Yeah. Uh, the Environmental Working Group, which we talked about before, did a very famous study uh, in, I think, 2009, where they found that Febreze uh, had 87 more chemicals in their product than they listed. Uh, some of which were highly toxic. Wow. I think they have changed things since then, uh, but this was a big shocking report uh, in the in the mid, uh, I guess, yeah, mid aughts. Is that right? Yeah, mid aughts. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I think I think things have changed since then. But uh, in order to not get served divorce papers, you know what I have to talk about for a second. What? I have to talk oh about yes, of course. <laughs> my wife's company, uh, Mama Bath and Body, because Emily makes room spray. Mm -hmm. And she makes some. soy candles. And I told her about this, and I was like, well, what's in your room spray? Name all the ingredients. She said water, alcohol, and essential oils. That's it. That's when her, wow. it's in her room spray. And then her soil candles are soy wax, uh, essential oils, and then here's the key. Um, well, two keys. Soy wax is a key because most candles that you get in the store are paraffin wax, mm -hmm. which is a petroleum byproduct. Gross, gross, mm -hmm. gross. Uh, and uh, cotton wicks. So the wicks are made out of cotton, and most of the wicks and paraffin candles are not. So they're actually the the smoke that is coming up, that black smoke from a candle, is right. no good to be yeah. in your house. Yep. So, uh, you know, if you're interested, you can go to loveyourmama.com to check out her room sprays. See, I told you guys we don't do buzz marketing. <laughs> I have to, man. This is her passion. Think. And like stuff like when I mentioned mass marketed uh, smell good products in your home, she just, uh, th that's a big, as you know, trigger for our house and our family. Sure. Uh, these fragrances that people think, oh, it just makes your house smell great. And uh, to us, it makes us sneeze and gives sure, us yeah. allergies and stuff like that. Yeah, or like the clip-on air fresheners that like give you a migraine, even though you've never had a migraine before in your life, the kind you put on a car's air vent. Yeah, part of the study from the Environmental Working Group studied a bunch of stuff like that. Uh, and... Uh, they did tackle Febreze a little bit, but the real offenders were some of those nasty, like, gelatin toilet, you know, things you'll drop in a toilet or <laughs> plug into a wall. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they've cleaned up their act, act or not, honestly, but we don't use that stuff either. I mean, you can smell them. They smell like chemicals. It doesn't yeah. smell like an actual <laughs> smell. Like, they no. have to make up new names for these things. They're not they, like, well, they we're do. not legally allowed to call this citrus. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. It's a problem. I really think that when historians look back or even average people look back at 100, 150 years, this is going to be one of those periods where they're like, wow, the federal government really did not protect uh, the American people and, in fact, sold them out pretty hard every yeah. which way. It's a shameful time to be alive. Agreed. And I get to be married another day. Good job, Chuck. Uh, and good job, Emily, with loveyourmama.com. <laughs> And since I said that, everybody, that means short stuff is out. 
Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Favorite shows. Favorite shows.